What's up you guys? Welcome to my channel. My name is Pablo and I will be guiding you on how to control a brushless motor in open loop mode and in a couple of more videos I will show you how to do it in closed loop mode. So uh, I'm going to explain the setup, uh, the code, uh, do some examples for you and put a lot of links in the, in the comment section or in the description so that you can uh, do some work uh, at home. Okay, so let's get started. So this is the setup. As you can see, we have a brushless motor here, rotating slowly. This is a gimbal uh, type of a brushless motor. And it is being driven by a power stage, an L6234D, and uh, an Arduino one that is connected to a potentiometer on analog port 1. We also have a power supply for the motor uh, because the USB is not enough. So we, uh, I'm using 5 volts here to drive the power stage. So this is the code that I wrote for this example. And I think it's pretty straightforward. We use port uh, analog 1 for the potentiometer. Then we have the three coils of the brushless motor connected to ports 9, 10 and 11. Then we have an array here for, a, for making a lookup table. This lookup table will hold a, a sine wave function that we're going to use to drive uh, each of the coils. And uh, I made a small program here. Uh, I am using this to send some data into the serial port. So right now if we open the serial port, we can see this data arriving. Okay, there you see it. To better visualize this, uh, this data, I'm going to use Excel. So I'm just going to connect using PLX DAC to port 4. And when I press connect, you see that the data that I'm sending with the Arduino starts populating the spreadsheet. So I got now a hundred and something um, rows. So I'm just going to make a small chart here. And these are the, the values that are being sent for coil A, B and coil C. And if I make a quick uh, chart here, you will see some, some magic. So this is what's being sent right now by the code. It's uh, three sinusoidal waves that you can see here that I'm uh, following, the blue one, an orange one and a grey one. And they are out of phase by 120 degrees. This is what's needed to drive a brushless motor and of course the frequency of these uh, signals is going, to, is going to transfer as the speed of the motor and the amplitude will, will uh, have to do more with the torque of the motor. So there you go, this, uh, I hope this shows clearly what needs to be generated by the Arduino in order to drive one of these uh, brushless motors. Now we can take a look at the code uh, a little bit uh, with more detail. And the first thing I want to bring your attention or I want to explain is this part. These registers, I need to change them because they uh, affect the, P to, the PWM frequency, which is normally done around, at around 490 hertz. And uh, let me show you what happens if we, if we leave that untouched. So this would be the default values. And if I program the Arduino with these values, So if you can hear that annoying sound, that sound is coming from the motor. The motor is vibrating at 490 hertz and that makes this uh, audible by the human ear. So if we change this register to, uh, to this other value, then the frequency goes up to 31 kilohertz and that is outside of the human's ear uh, bandwidth. So we can no longer hear it. So I'm going to program it and you will see what happens or you will hear what happens. There it is, rotating, same as before, but now the sound cannot be perceived by our ears. Okay, so then we go down here and there's a bunch of uh, stuff here that you will be able to study. I will get rid of this, uh, I will 
comment this out and then you can check so this is the part where you can choose what you want to do with this code you can drive a motor in a constant speed so just by changing this value here you can uh, make different um, you can make different speeds you can make the motor go at different speeds okay that's a little bit faster and uh, also we can uh, we can take these comments away and we can put comments back here so this should give us a a speed control with a potentiometer so we're going to take the value of the potentiometer and use that in our code so let's see what happens what we have now is the variable control uh, part of the code and as I change the position of the potentiometer you can see that the motor is rotating faster or slower you can get to the point that the field is running so fast or is moving so fast that the motor cannot follow and that's what's happening right there so I need to slow down a little bit so now for the last part this is going to be a short video apparently uh, let me know if things need more clarification in the comments uh, things that you don't understand so I can maybe uh, in the following videos do it a little bit better um, so yeah for the last part we're going to do position control and this is an open loop kind of control so let's see what this part of the code does when I press uh, play okay so now we have position control and what you will see is a relationship between the position I put on the potentiometer and the position the truck or the motor goes to. And in this case you can see that when I turn the potentiometer half a turn, the motor actually turns one complete turn. And that is because of the ratio that we define in the code. So that was a quick demo on the position control. Now if we want to change the ratio what we need to do is play with this number here. If we now change it to a 5 or a 4, I think it was 2 before, then we can see what happens. Now we're playing with a different uh, ratio. So now we'll see, I'll turn this for half a turn and as you can see the truck turned for half a turn, almost. So play with the ratio in order to uh, match your requirements okay guys so that was a quick example of the three different ways of controlling this uh, open loop motors uh, with a constant speed and uh, variable speed and uh, position control now something that happens here is that it's not very clear what the feedback would uh, give us if we had a closed loop system so I want you to take a look at the motor right now and I'll explain. Right now I can place the truck or the motor in any of these positions, right? And if I try to move the motor, it, th there will be some resistance to it. But if I overcome the resistance, it finds a new position to fall into. So this feels like, like a step. Clack, clack, clack. Clack. And if you count them, there are seven steps in this particular motor that actually matches the number of poles that this motor has. So by having seven poles, that means that we need to send seven electric revolutions for the motor to accomplish one mechanical revolution. Now, what happens here is that the field is being oriented for a certain position but when I change the motor there's nothing that says to the microcontroller hey the end position is no longer what you wanted so the only thing we can do here to better defend this position is to in increase the torque now to increase the torque there is a part here that is multiplying by a factor <laughs> I put this factor to be 0.5 because I was using a 12 volt power supply before. 
Now I'm playing with a 5 volt power supply. So I can take this and just multiply by 1. And this will just reduce the amount of the final PWM being sent to the coils. So if you were sending 100% uh, in the program, then it will actually just reach 50% if you have a 0.5 here. But right now I put it back to 1. So this should increase the current on the uh, coils and therefore improve the torque. Okay, so now I changed the amount of torque that is hitting the motor and I can feel that it's much higher than before. But still, as this is an open loop, it will not defend the position. It will just become a little bit harder to make it skip. But once it has skipped, it has no idea that the original position is lost. All right, guys, so this is the first video of a series of videos that I will be making for you. Let me know in the comments what can be done uh, to improve these videos. And I hope that with this, with this information, with this code and with this video, you now have an idea of how to get started. I will leave some information in the description and stay tuned for the next video. See ya.